25 year old woman that live in Toronto right now. Um, I currently work for PISAN, Prisoners HIV AIDS Support Action Network as a women's community program coordinator. Um, I guess living with hepatitis C, a little bit about my background was I was um, born to alcoholic parents. I was given up for adoption right from birth, um, left in the hospital. Um, I grew up just outside of Toronto um, in a small town called Georgetown, which is a white town. Um, so obviously I didn't fit in growing up. And um, <clears throat> I had a lot of self-esteem issues and stuff. Um, I was quite a big person growing up, so I got made fun of quite a bit. Um, and that led to me running away from home at a very age, at a very really, really young age, at 16. And I moved to the streets of Toronto, where I faced. Um, uh, I got into alcohol and drugs. Um, I actually had two pregnancies on the street. Um, one, I have an almost 18-year-old daughter at home, and I have a. I guess she's almost 16 now. Um, but I struggled with homelessness and, and, and that for quite a many, many, a long time. Um, so back in 2003 was when I last had custody of my girls. Um, and I actually had um, a fire set to my house and I was charged with attempted murder and arson. Um, the charges got downgraded to disregard for human life and uh, arson. Um, I served some time in jail, but when I got out, I had nothing. Um, and when I got out, I had nothing but the jail clothes on my back. And um, because of losing my girls, um, custody of my girls, I turned to hardcore drugs, which was um, heroin and crack and injection drug use and stuff. And um, I quickly contracted uh, hepatitis C through, I believe, um, injection drug use. Um, I, I don't think I got it through sex. Um, I wasn't really having sex with guys back then. But um, yeah, so I think I, I, I contracted it through, um, hepa um, through injection drug use. Shortly after, I was diagnosed with um, HIV as well. But I knew for myself, I needed to clear the um, hepatitis C. Um, and for me, that meant to going on the interferon treatment. And by then, back then, or well, it still is, is that you have to remain clean and sober. Um, while you go through the treatment and stuff like that. And that was really hard for me to do because I was addicted to the crack, I was addicted to the heroin, I was addicted to the alcohol. Um, so with an agency called Sherburn Health Center in Toronto, they were able to meet me where I was at and, and help me get the services that I need. They, they helped reduce the risks of my behaviors of some of them um, and, and break down some barriers so that I was able to access interferon and, and able to complete it. Um, when I talk about breaking down barriers and, and reducing the risks of um, my behaviors, it, it meant even simple as meeting me while I was intoxicated outside to do some services and stuff like that because there's no way that any agency will work with you pretty much in anywhere back then. It's slowly changing. If you're under the influence, you don't get services. You don't get services, you don't get help. You don't get help. You can't move forward in life. Um, so the Sherburn Health bus met me outside and, you know, they, as long as, as long as I used to leave my beer outside or hidden in a tree or somewhere, you know, I could come in and fill out papers to do, to do the medical work, to start getting the things rolling for treatment, to, to do the, to do the medical things for interferon and stuff like that. Um, <clears throat> yeah, and they broke down some barriers for me. Um, with my drug use as well. And so, you know, they really supported me and, and used that model with me. And I'm, I'm really grateful for, for doing that today because, you know, I was able to go on to have two healthy pregnancies. Um, well, one that I was still using. I obviously went back to using drugs and, and alcohol after I finished my treatment, but I did clear it. Um, today I still remain clear um, of hep C. Um, and I went on to have two healthy pregnancies. Um, well, they are HIV negative and hep C negative as well. Um, I have my, um, I have one pregnancy um, I was using drugs and, and alcohol with. Um, I'm not really proud of it, but um, yeah. And she's, she's a little hyper today. I think she, she suffers from a little bit of fetal alcohol effects um, or syndrome. Um, but the other one, um, 
lives at home with me. Um, he's almost, he's going on four and a half years old today. Um, and he's healthy. Um, he also has no HIV or hep C. Um, but today, it's, it's, it's a struggle sometimes. Knowing at where I came from and whatever and, and, and where I'm going and where I am today. But I mean, back then it was, it was a struggle to, to even get out of bed sometimes just because of everything that I had to deal with and, and, and everything that I, that I had to think about dealing with um, in order to get clean and, and healthy again um, to, to have the life today. I didn't think it was possible back then, but places like Sherbin Health using those models really helped me to get to where I am today. And like I said, today I am um, the Women's Community Program Coordinator. I just started in January at Pisan. Um, but I, but you know, it was able to, I, I started from doing peer projects, doing peer research, doing speaking about my story. I guess I'm still speaking about my story. <laughs> um, but yeah, today, today I live a healthy life. Um, I am undetectable and um, I have two great kids at home and they're free if you want them. Um, <laughs> but they come as a package now. So if you take the older one, you gotta take the little one. Um, but yeah, um, that's my life today. That's where I've been and you know, I, I thank Creator for, for every day that he's given me. I thank him for everything where I've been, um, every journey's creator never gave it to me for a reason. I mean, there's a reason why I got it, and today I'm able to share my story with you guys, so thank you.